went up the steps. They drew fire through a window. And for the last and final time, again, Mark made the choice to turn into that line of fire. He willingly gave his life for his teammates and for the freedoms that we enjoy every day. And I think about the courage that young man had to have. He wrote an amazing letter about two weeks before he was killed and it's back on the table. But that letter's inspired millions and millions of people around the world. And in response to that letter, I founded America's Mighty Warriors. I'm sure you guys will agree. His name Mark, which meant Mighty Warrior, he lived up to that name. But it's not just about Mark. It's about each and every one of our Eddies, our Marks, every one of you in here who served. It's about you and your families. And I put on Mark's boots, picked up his weapon, and stay in the fight for you guys because I do understand who pays for our freedom and the cost of that. We've got a table back there with a lot of information about what we're doing at America's Mighty Warriors for our families of the fallen and for those who are wounded and who have served. And it's my honor to be here today and to challenge each one of you to please have that same courage. We have a nation that is faltering and we're not living according to godly principles and we have to take our nation back. But that's gonna require courage. And we have examples of two men, Eddie and Mark, that have set that bar for us. So I'd ask you, please, follow them in their footsteps and take our country back. Just one person can make a difference. You know, it isn't in the Bill of Rights that our right to vote is secured. It is implied in our republic. We must have a secure, fair, honest, pure vote in this country if we intend to keep liberty alive here. And it was useless for Eddie and Mark to fight if we won't fight here at home. He was a crisis manager during the Northeastern blackout of 2003. You've seen him on Fox News, CNN, Washington Times, townhall.com, writes for the Daily Caller and the American Thinker, and uh, Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck, and others, including uh, Matthew Drudge, have carried uh, his pieces. I turn the podium over to Mr. Michael Prell. Welcome, Michael. And we are told to imagine that ourselves, personally, and our nation, and the world are all in perfect balance between good and evil. And it all hangs on how we behave. And that's how I try to live my life. Righteousness and redemption on one side, and evil and destruction on the other side. For a person, for a nation, for the world. Imagine that it hangs on you. God wants us to have liberty. To the Jews, he gave the Exodus and Israel. To America, he gave liberty and power, and the power to be a light into the nations. The world right now is at a tipping point, and I think you all can feel it and sense it, between good and evil, liberty and tyranny. And if we come together, like Israel did, like I hope America's coming together now, in the merit of Eddie Jeffers, God willing, we'll tip it in the right direction. Thank you. He's a Christian, he's a Catholic, pro-life and pro-liberty. He even stood up to the trustees at the little Catholic school in South Bend that I spent seven years at. <laughs> Got arrested for doing so. He started his blog, Loyal to Liberty, Liberty Through Faithful Reason, in January 2009, around the time Mr. Obama began his occupation of the Oval Office, and that's a quote. And boy, is that ever the case. Without further ado, Ambassador Alan Keith. Thank you. 
must say, occasions like this are always a little bit of a, of a mixed occasion for me. It's wonderful to see so many folks gathering together of like mind and heart. And it always gives me great encouragement, which is not something to be taken lightly anymore. Because I think uh, encouragement is not in vast supply, especially if you really care about this country. But of course, this occasion is in some ways like that, because what we are gathered here to do is to remember a young man who gave his life for his country. In one way, that is an occasion for grief. In another, it is an occasion for pride and for the celebration of a life that was dedicated to something beyond the moment for someone who understood the importance of living in a way that bore witness to the truth that lies beyond our needs and beyond our hopes because it respects the will and purpose of the God who made us all. It is in that spirit that I want to talk to you tonight about how we can in fact best remember uh, Eddie Jeffers. I believe that there is no better way for us to remember our honored dead than to honor the character that will uplift their sacrifice in order that it may become the christening of an example that can inspire people throughout the world to accept the constraints by which we may live together in peace and on account of which, and only which, we will, as a race of human beings, ever be truly free. For except we take on the constraints of God-endowed justice, we shall never escape the terrible, grim shackles of war and violence. But to do that, we're going to have to do more than argue about taxes. We're going to have to do more than worry about our economy. We're going to have to think hard about whether it's really right or wrong to kill our babies in the womb. To put the family that denotes above all our willingness to see the deep relation between the individual's choice and the common good and survival of all humanity and remake it in a paradigm of hedonistic selfishness that forgets that the whole point of family life was to remind us that we are one part of a larger whole of humanity that cannot survive except we choose to do right by it, raising up the children who will be the hope of futures to come. See? We can't forget these things. We can't neglect them. We can't put them on the back burner and let time take care of them. Do you know why? Because if we don't think carefully through these moral things, then we will literally, taking morality out of our spirit and out of our character, find ourselves in the place that is quickly becoming a quagmire of destruction for us, a place of demoralization, where the best lack all conviction faced by the worst who are filled with passionate intensity. Don't you think that's the juxtaposition now? ISIS and Obama. God knows what this man has in him that is about justice. But I do know that they are filled with passionate intensity. 
And though for all they say otherwise, the God they worship seems to be a God of violence and mayhem and a justice defined by the strongest will to power. Yet they burn with a fire that will scorch us to death if we do not rediscover the light of our own spirit, the light of our own souls, the light of our own courage, the lamp that has lit this country's way, so that we realized that we cannot serve ourselves except we do so justly, that we cannot do so justly except we serve more than ourselves, lifting up in the way that we are, the way that we live, the way that we struggle, the way sometimes that we fight, the way sometimes that we are willing to sacrifice and die, lifting up not just our own good, but the good that God intends for all humanity. This is who we are. We will not have to fear a living soul on earth if in the fear of God we soon remember it. This is not, these were a gift from my, uh, from my agent. Okay, it was a federal agent, that's not important. <laughs> What's important is the, uh, is the, uh, is the escape. Um, I'm going to escape in world record time. Um, I'm going to do it without the key. I've got a key in my pocket just in case something goes wrong, but I need someone to help me out. Uh, front row lady, front row lady, would you mind? I've got a key in my pocket. Can you grab the key so I can't cheat? No? Okay, wait a minute. No, this lady over here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> she looks friskier than you. No, stand up, stand up. Come over here. Come here and grab the key in my pocket. Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's half the fun. I don't know. No, over here. And show it to them. Take it out. Hold it up high so they can see it. Hold it up high. Take it out. Hold it up high. Yep, remove that. What is that? Doesn't look like a key. Oh, it's a handcuff. <laughs> Come on. That's the way to get started right there, ladies and gentlemen. I'll take that. You can have to see it. All that applause is for you. Well, this has been a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm. Outstanding speakers. We've talked about the situation in the country. I am honored that Brother David would ask me to share a few words. You know, preachers have become a byword and a joke word. If you watched the news and listened to the government, you would believe there wasn't a church in America. We talk about the religious left. I believe the greatest problem in our nation is the religious left. 